Remember when you were a kid and you played with things like balloons? We call that developing a physical intuition. Because everyone has those early experiences, it's very popular to think that enclosed containers have a gas of photons in them, like balloons have a gas of air. In this video, I'm going to use that analogy knowing it has limitations. I will show that it can be useful and how it can be extremely misleading. All this is possible because Max Planck learned the physics of light in a container when he developed an explanation for black body radiation. Let's begin by comparing the number of molecules with the number of photons in the same volume. Here's an animation of how gases are usually explained in high school chemistry class. The molecules are represented as little balls bouncing around inside a container. Their speed is related to the temperature of the gas. The pressure of the gas comes from molecules colliding with the container. Using that model, the teacher derived the ideal gas law. Pressure times volume equals number of molecules times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. At least, that's the way we learn the law in today's science classes. When it was originally formulated in the 1800s, they weren't sure that atoms and molecules even existed. They developed a similar law that doesn't count molecules, but uses moles instead. That law reads PV equals nRT, and those early scientists determined the value of R, the universal gas constant, as 8.3 joules per mole per degree Kelvin. The early scientists didn't know how many molecules were in a mole. Today we learn that one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, which is known as Avogadro's number. A smart high schooler can calculate that one liter of gas at normal atmosphere pressure and temperature contains about 2.4 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. Now we can use our analogy that photons are like atoms and ask how many photons are in a one liter container. Begin by noting that our animation model has many problems when applied to photons. The first is that it shows the balls with a particular size. Photons do not have a size because they only interact once and are gone forever. You can't measure the left side and then the right side of a photon. The second problem is that it shows us being able to trace the path of the balls. This implies that the balls are distinguishable, which photons are not. Also note how accepting we are of animations. The skeptical side of our brain is easily fooled by the visual part. But let's ignore these objections and continue with the light is particles idea to see what it gets us. We will use our theory of black body radiation to calculate how many photons would be in a liter. Begin by recalling Planck's formula for the energy in the cavity as a function of frequency. Since each photon has energy hf, the number of photons as a function of energy is just the above equation divided by hf. To get the total number of photons in the container, integrate over all frequencies. The integral isn't trivial, but you can look it up. The results are shown here. When you put in numbers for the variables, you find that a one liter container at room temperature and atmospheric pressure contains 5.45 times 10 to the 11th photons. So you see at room temperature and in Earth's atmosphere, one liter contains about 10 trillion times more air molecules than photons. The light is particle heuristic is possibly useful. Now let's compare how accurately we can know the number of particles in the two types of gases. That means how much the number fluctuates. The statistical word is the variance. In chemistry class, you learn that the number of atoms doesn't change in ordinary chemistry conditions. We say that the number of atoms is conserved. 
it's always the same. If there are no chemical reactions, then we can also say that the number of molecules is conserved. Therefore, the variance in the number of molecules in one liter of gas is zero. However, when you use the black body formula to calculate the fluctuations in the number of photons, you get the first surprising result. It's infinite. Here's the variance formula that you can find in statistical mechanics books. For a photon gas, the last term is infinite. The problem happens because photons are not conserved and low frequency photons have very low energy. In the light is particles model, photons spring to life and die in infinite quantities. This reminds us that you have to be careful when using the light is particles idea. Einstein himself called it a heuristic, but you'll find many YouTube videos that take it as the truth. Now let's see what happens when you squeeze a photon gas. Every kid knows what happens when you squeeze a balloon. It stretches because the pressure of the gas goes up. The volume of the balloon goes down, so the pressure goes up. So what happens if you squeeze a container of photons? The answer is nothing. The balloon does not stretch because the pressure does not change. How can that be? Well, here's the relationship between pressure, temperature, and volume for a photon gas. It's called the equation of state, and it's equivalent to our familiar PV equals nRT for gases of molecules. The formula is derived from Planck's black body theory and standard thermodynamics. You see that it does not contain any mention of volume. The pressure of a photon gas doesn't depend on the volume. It only depends on the temperature. When a photon gas is compressed, the rubber does not stretch because the number of photons immediately shrinks by exactly the right amount to compensate for the reduced volume. This is another way that photons don't behave like atoms. The formula allows us to calculate the pressure in a bottle of photons at room temperature. It's about 2 times 10 to the minus 6 pascals, which is less than a trillionth of atmospheric pressure. So it's no wonder that kids don't discover the joy of playing with photon gases. You may have noticed that I use the idea of a container of photons without explaining how the photons get in the container. The kid in us expects that you have to put them in the container, perhaps with a flashlight. But no, you don't have to put them in. They're always in the container just because it has a temperature. We learned that in the black body videos. Any container naturally forms a gas of photons. They don't have to be added. This is interesting when you think of outer space, which is cold but still has a temperature of about 2.7 degrees Kelvin. We think of outer space as empty. Estimates say it has much less than one atom per liter. Now we can calculate that it has about 400,000 photons per liter, plus or minus infinity. Next. We want to examine what happens when the container develops a leak and the air or photons can escape. The kid in us knows what happens with air. The air rushes out and we get a little thrill. So with our light is particles model, you would expect the same with photon gases. You'll be surprised at what happens with photon gases. When the calculation was first done, it influenced the very development of science and engineering. Watch the next video to see how it was done.